So the plan of this presentation is first to do simply a little bit of hands on creating a figure. And then after that, I give a bit of an overview of a couple of things to, to take into account. Yeah, why use IPE? Because you will want to make figures. I mean, you will want to make figures in, in papers. You want to make figures in presentations. Here is an example of a figure that is made with IPE. I mean, here's an example of a presentation made with IPE. IPE is simply, in particular, if you do computational geometry, uh, an excellent tool to, to make all of these figures. It's made exactly for this purpose, I mean, for scientific publications. You have LaTeX integration, so it's very easy to put in um, the, the formulas that you need. Uh, what you see is what you get, so you don't have to kind of do any programming to get to your figure. You can make presentations as, as this one, and there are simply lots of features, and if there's a feature that you're missing, there's also a, a ways to, to write extensions. It's a tool that I use for, for figures, and it's also the tool that I use for most of my presentations. As this is intended to be a follow-along tutorial, make sure to have IPE installed, and installed just means, I mean, you just have to download it and unzip it. Um, I also assume you have a computer. It's useful to have a mouse, and it's good to have LaTeX installed. Anyone doesn't have LaTeX installed on their computer? Okay, so what you can do then, let me go there. You can do here on the help, there's enable online compilation. And then we can do, use this online LaTeX. Yeah, I wouldn't necessarily recommend it because like for instance, if you want to use fonts or ex certain extensions, it, it doesn't necessarily work, but okay. At least for today, hopefully it will, will work. Let me disable that again. If you have just opened IPE, you will have not a window like mine, but an empty window with an A40. So that's how, how things should be for you. Now we hope we're all ready to start. So let's, as uh, the first thing that we do, we make this figure up here. So we want to have a circle with the foreground inside with the angles. And for that, we want to first draw a circle. So here you see how to kind of draw a circle and that we can simply do. Yeah, so here's a, here's a circle. In my case, it's in whatever color I have here on the left. So that is right now blue. For everything, there are shortcuts. So you can also press O and then you end up here. Okay, then we want to draw these points here. These one, two, three, four points. For that, I use a mark. So that's here, or I can just do M. But now the problem is how do I get the point where I want to have it? And for that, there's these cool snapping features. So for instance, this button here, there I can snap to a control point. So you can also do Shift F4, or press on that button. And then as you see, if I now, oh, I should also here again, activate the right layer. No, okay. If I press here, I have my control point in the middle. And for the, let's say I want to have the one, two, th the other three points here, there I can do snap to boundary. That is this one here. I will turn off snap to control point, and then I can place points somewhere here. One, two. Three. Did that work out for everyone? Does everyone have a circle with four points? Then let's see. Okay, we have, but everyone else has this. Uh, now we want to uh, next draw the polygon. So there's a, do you, I mean, obviously in my drawing, you could use a polygonal line or you could use a polygon that is both fine. And then you want to do a snap to vertex because you want to have your polygon go through these vertices. And I, I mean, I started with a left click, left click, left click, and then the last one I do right click. Then what I will do for now, or what you can now also do is uh, change properties of, of your drawing if you want to. I want the, my foreground to be black. So I go here and change the color. For instance, the outer circle, I would like to have gray. So I make it gray. You won't have exactly the same colors I, uh, as I have, but you will have colors to choose from. Then I want to have that one dashed, let's say. So then in this, I do, oops, sir, I don't want to have an arrow. I can also simply right click on it and get the menu of, of properties. And there's also dash style. And okay, again, you have slightly different dash styles here. Um, let's see. Okay, maybe let me immediately put this one in the, it's not on the slide yet, but I put this one in the background with control B. Control B, now I see my points again. Okay, let's have, I, I'll have blue points. I don't know what color you have. Up to you. Yeah, does everyone have a circle and a foreground and is happy with your colors? Good. Then we want to add labels. 
So, and here we have different types of labels. Since this is kind of math, we want to have math labels. So I click on this thing here, and then I can put my labels here. So I just do, now I can do P here. And of course, it takes the color that I had here. So let me switch that back to black because I would like to have it in black. And I actually, I want to have it in this layer here. Um, to paste. Okay. More letters and A, a B. Now for the angles. There, because I can simply use LaTeX, and because I'm already in math mode, I simply say backslash alpha. And I should already say, I mean, what I'm already doing all the time. Um, you can, so you can find you. So these are kind of, this is a selection tool. This is the translation tool. So we're starting, and then you can, if you have that enabled, you can move stuff around. What I would typically do and instead simply put down Alt, and then I can, again, with, with, with the left mouse button, press drag, drag my label over. Everyone has some labels? Good. Now we want to draw these angles. So this green thing and that blue thing there. Okay, for that we have to do a bit of geometric thinking of what we actually need. So I would start by taking placing a circular arc. So there's a circular arc. Go here. And now I want to, if I have snap to, I don't want to have snap to vertex, I want to have snap to boundary enabled so that I'm here sitting on the boundary. Place a point, place my second point. Now I have my circular arc, but I want to have this kind of wedge shape. That's why I'm also taking a polyline. And now I want to snap to vertex again because I have my circular arc, the endpoints are vertices, I can use those. I go left click on one, left click on corner, right click on the other one. Now I want to, um, okay, now I want to make sure that those are actually in the right layer. Edit, paste. Now I want to select both and then join the path. So selection. To select the second one, I hold down the shift button and again, left click on it. Now I have both selected and then right click, join path. And with that done, I will want to bring this into the background. So control B and fill it with an appropriate color, obviously not with white. And the filling is here. So if I press here, I see that it's kind of filled with the color of my choice. For me, it's a kind of light blue, whatever color you ha have there. And maybe I, I want to have this uh, circular arc thinner. So right now I have everything on fat. I make it normal. Maybe I want to have that in gray. So I do that here, gray. Oh, and I have to put my circular arc also in the background so that I see my beta. Could you quickly say again how you made the region which you then filled? Ah, yeah. I also have to snap to vertex enabled. So I first do the center. Then I do one of the boundaries. Then I do the other boundary like that. This is my one half. Then I do a shape one, two, or, or a polyline one, two, three, left, uh, right click with the last one. Then I select both of those, right click, join path. And now I have my shape. I move it to the background. I give it the color I want to give it. That was a, interactive exercise. Now let me just go through the features and interface briefly. Okay, so we have the markers here, which we have used. Then we have the three different text tools. So this is just if you want to have text labels, if you want to have math symbols, in particular, if you want to have math labels, you would use the mathematical symbols. If you're making slides and you want to have actual paragraphs or lines of text, then you would use the paragraph feature. So these here, this is a paragraph. Here we've seen the various shapes that we can make. There's also this pen tool um, if you want to write on your slide. And then you have these basic tools, which here are to the left, which is selection, translate, rotate, stretch. Okay, here I don't use that often. There's also the move graph node. Let me demonstrate that. If you have a graph, and now I graph move a vertex, line segments that are attached stay attached. 
So that's a kind of a useful feature if you're working with graphs. And up here, those are the snapping. So snap to vertex, snap to control point, boundary, those we used. Snap to intersection can be, of course, very useful if you have, um, if I have lines and I want to place something at the intersection, then with snap, with snap to intersection, I can get it there, for instance. Look. Then most of the time you will want to have at least the grid turned on, so then everything is like kind of nicely aligned on the grid. And then there are kind of things for angles. Um, I leave that for you to explore. Okay, then next, we there are iplets. So iplets are here. You can also install I, iplets that are kind of not, do not come with ipe. So, so for instance, uh, one that I use is uh, one for free space diagrams. Installing iplets is very easy. You just put them into the corresponding folder in your ipe installation, and then you have the iplet. And these are the iplets that are built in. Lots of useful stuff here, like turning, rotating, um, what I highlighted here is align and distribute. If you want to structure your slides, uh, this align and distribute is useful. If I want to align these boxes, so I can align horizontal center, I can vertically distribute, I can distribute top to bottom, then they're touching here. I can align the right sides, align the vertical center, and so on. So here in the IP, the iplets give you a lot of kind of small stuff that you might want to have. Also for law diagrams. Now we come to layers, views, and pages. So I organize everything in layers, meaning that in particular, that makes it easy if I have something in a different layer. So let me go here. So now I have this part here, down here, that is in layer one. It's very easy to switch it on and off. So layers are collection of objects. The yellow thing here, what is highlighted yellow, that's the active layer. That's where I'm currently editing. So what, if I draw something, it's automatically in the yellow layer. There's not kind of a depth order on the layers. So I mean, depth we did with control B, control F, and that is independent of these layers and you can rename and sort them. And I can also use this for animations in combination with views. A view is a collection of visible layers. So in this view, you see these layers with a checkbox, they are um, enabled or visible. Uh, and that's very useful for animations because then I can add a view here, view kind of new view, or even very often I will do new view and new layer because I often also when I want to create a new view, I also need a new layer. And then I can, if I want to animate this somehow, I want to have layers disappearing, I simply deselect them here. And just to show it on the previous slide, I mean, that was what I was using here also. This, this is one view, this is the next view. We have this layer enabled, another layer enabled, another layer enabled to point at the active one, and so on. So we have layers, we have views, and then we have pages. So pages you can think of like a slide of a presentation. Uh, in particular, a, a page always has a, a fixed, if, if you use a title, title, and I highlighted the set title because that's somehow a feature that is often overlooked, but with control P, I change my title. And the page is simply, yeah, it's a collection of views. Then after it's in your PDF, every view will correspond to a PDF page. So it's not that a page corresponds to a PDF page, but a page corresponds to like a presentation page. So all of these are different views on the same page. What else do I want to say? Style sheets. Yeah, so um, style sheets, let me show you what style sheet I'm using here. So style sheets. I'm right now using a standard style sheet and one that I've made for the seminar. Let me open that one, edit. So here, this is my style sheet. What you, for instance, see the colors that I have in my menu, those come from the style sheet. So those I defined here because those were the colors I wanted to have with various dash styles, uh, opacity, the font sizes. Often enough for presentations, for instance, you want to use the different font sizes and if it would be kind of a for in, in a figure for a paper. And then it's useful to be able to just switch styles and get, the, for instance, thicker lines. I mean, in a paper, I would use thinner lines and in a presentation, I can manipulate that using a style. And also the fonts that I want to use, I can set here. I load them, uh, as I showed you, edit, and then I go here to style sheets. Also in the IPE uh, folder, there will also be more styles. So there is also a default presentation style. Where I discussed a couple of things that you can set there. So, I mean, definitely, if you're making a presentation, you will want to use some kind of style specifically for presentations, for instance, a seminar style, because that will give you also this layout here, so then you don't have the standard A4, and it will make things thicker and so on. If you see a style that you like, as I showed you, it was, it's also easy to simply, you can simply save the style 
it's easy, easy to take a style from, from one document to another one. Okay, selecting objects. I mean, we already did that. Uh, left click selects an object. It can be sometimes a bit tricky to select a mark. So let's say I have a first placer mark here. Oop. Now I want to select this mark, I'm, but I'm selecting the uh, rectangle instead. So what I can do, so one way to do it would be to cycle through the objects that are close to that. For that, I click here and then with space, I go to a different object. So I hold down my, my left mouse and the space bar I go through the objects. Easier way is to, and that's the next option here. I mean, it's actually the option to select uh, multiple objects, but I, I can also use it to select my small point here. If I drag a um, square or a rectangle over it, a selection range, then I select the object. And depending on whether I drag from left to right or right to left, I select everything or just, so if I do, for instance, left to right here, then I only get what is ever, what is contained. If I do from right to left, I get everything that is intersected. Can I do it here now? Now I have everything selected that's intersected. I mean, in doubt, if you organize things in layers, it may, might be easier to, to select by then having, I mean, disabling uh, the layer where the things are that you don't want to have and so on. Particularly, you can select everything in an active layer by control shift A. So that's also a reason to use layers. Then pasting. In particular, okay, this is pasting. If you paste from another style file, then you have to make sure that you have the same style sheets because if you have different colors to find, um, it might be that things don't show up nicely. If I paste something from a different presentation and it has different colors, it might end up simply being black. What I typically do is simply then edit the because everything in IPE is XML, or well, I mean the the, the, the the IPE file as such, I, I simply edit the XML to get the colors right again. Yeah, here with the selection, it's sometimes a bit confusing because it's, I mean, if I select something, I don't get the properties of what I selected now, um, but it's the last thing that I selected uh, previously. That's something to get used to. Uh, one more thing about pasting. So let's say I have something let me have the square here. I copy it. So the regular paste, I uh, get it attached to, to, to where I am. If I want to paste it exactly on the same location, which I sometimes want to do, then I do that. This here, paste, uh, paste at cursor as a standard. There's also this paste here, and that pastes exactly at the location where I copied it from. Uh, now I just here put a lot of, um, kind of the most important shortcuts. Um, that is more for reference. So S for select, T for translate. Uh, we already had P and M. Also for the snapping, it's useful just to use the F keys. Most of the shortcuts you also see, like here, the alignment ones you see here. Also for creating new pages. I think these are, I still want to discuss. Control E is for, okay, let's say I have a polyline. With control E, I get go into the edit mode for that object. So now I can move the vertices. With space, I go out of the edit mode. That is also true for text. Control E allows me then to edit that text. Okay. And you see it's paragraph mode. So because uh, my paragraph ended here, it kind of go wraps around. I want to change that. I do change width. Now that's fine again. Yeah, it's also easy to kind of take properties from one object. Zooming is important. What you often want to have is fit page or fit objects. So if you're doing figures and objects might be good. If you're doing slides, you want to fit page. Uh, that is it. Now you're ready to use IPE.